So IPCC has three working groups. The one is on the science, the second is on the impact, and this one looks at the solution space. So what shall we do if we want to develop a strategy to protect ourselves against climate change? Mitigation uh, simply means uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. In order to achieve carbon reduction, we have different instruments. The two major instruments are carbon uh, efficiency, that means uh, less uh, uh, carbon for uh, energy unit, or energy efficiency, that means less energy for GDP. We have to use both instruments. In the last 20 years, we have been very efficient in the instrument number one, that means increase efficiency in the use of, of uh, energy, and definitely less uh, clever in the second instrument, which means uh, reduce uh, carbon content in uh, uh, energy supply. If you look at the all historical emissions accumulated over since pre-industrial, uh, the world has emitted about 2,000 billion tons of CO2, which is interesting how much we can still emit from now onwards if you want to attain two degrees. And still the largest responsibility is, of course, on the shoulders of uh, the industrialized countries, mostly OECD countries, which account, as you see in this figure, for about half of the total emissions, historical emissions, are attributed uh, to OECD. Most of the growth in emission came from developing countries in the past, in the very recent years. Uh, especially China and Asia in general, but I would say China, to the greatest extent, contributed uh, to the very large growth in emissions in the past 10 years. As you know, emissions have been growing steadily in the past 30-40 uh, years. Traditionally, they grew about 1%, 1.3% a year, but more, more recently, in the past decade, they grew as much as 2 and 2.5% per year, globally. This is a huge increase in emissions. A lot of emission growth coming from developing countries can also be attributed to trade of goods which are sold from developing countries to the developed countries, industrialized countries. About 20% of emissions uh, are attributed to trade. So 20% of emissions, for example, from China, more or less, uh, are actually depend, are embedded in the, the goods that are traded and then sold abroad. The per capita emissions, there's still a lot of variety and discrepancies in per capita emissions, um, with countries emitting uh, 10 to 20 billion tons of CO2 per capita per year, uh, and countries emitting as low as one. But things are changing rapidly. Think, for example, of China, in terms of emission standards, Chinese and Europeans are very similar now, uh, and yet, uh, in terms of income standards, there's still a big, a big disparity. difference between era 5 and era 4 is that there was a lot of focus on scenarios consistent with two degrees. Why? Because this is a policy prescription. And these are the scenarios that, as you see here, uh, are roughly in line with RCP 2.6. And when we look at policy, we especially focus on a single, on a specific year, which has a policy relevance and policy significance, which is 2030. These matters for negotiations, which are looking at now at post-2020. 2020. 2020 is already coming and approaching very fast. So, for example, if we take uh, emissions that increase to above 15, uh, 55 billion tons of CO2 in 2030, uh, then in order to achieve 2 degrees afterwards, uh, we will need to reduce emissions by as much as 6% every year which is a huge emission reduction and is completely at odds with historical rate of actually an increase in emission of about, as I said before, 1 to 2% a year. In this case, we would need to decrease it by as much as 6%. If we were to be a bit more ambitious and be below 55 in the range, maybe between 50 and 55 or even below 50, then we could achieve two degrees with a much lower effort, 3% emission reduction not 6%. So this is telling you that if we delay action to 2030 to above 55 billion tons of CO2, we will need to double the effort in terms of emission reduction rates, and of course, to double also the economic effort, because more emission reduction rates means also higher cost. About a cost increase quantifiable in about plus 
One of the key things that we looked, of course, is what are the economic costs of achieving uh, policies to re that reduce emissions at 2 degrees, 2.5 degrees, and so forth. Now, the ranges vary widely across studies. Um, if we want to achieve uh, 2 degrees, the costs are quantified in the range between maybe 1 to 4% GDP loss in 2030 and between 2 and 6% in 2050. Lower targets in terms of uh, higher temperatures would require much less effort. Um, still, these are only the cost of reducing emissions. They don't account for the benefit of reducing emissions. Of course, we are doing this because we want to have uh, not such a warm climate, and that will have benefits by itself. Uh, and in addition to that, I should mention that these scenarios have also been shown to have potential significant co-benefits, which I have not accounted in these estimates that I just mentioned, uh, and which pertain to uh, air pollution reduction, energy security improvement, uh, preservation of ecosystem services, uh, water management, and so forth. One of the key things here, who is going to bear this cost? Which regions? And there's always a tension between efficiency, achieving everything at the lowest cost possible, and equity, sharing the burden equitably. And the majority of emission reduction and the majority of economic costs would fall on developing countries. The key determinant here for this is the intensity of CO2 emissions in the baseline. We can and reconcile equity and efficiency by allowing for transfer across countries, uh, payments or through markets. Think about uh, the clean development mechanism market. Uh, and by doing so, we can achieve both efficiency and equity. However, doing so would require establishing a very large carbon market. We are talking about an order of magnitude bigger than C the CDM with transfers, a market which has the potential to, uh, to deal with several billion tons of CO2 of, of trade, of permits, by 20, 2030. And associated transfers uh, of as, uh, as much as $100 billion a year, which is interestingly similar to the, what the figures discussed in negotiations under the Green Climate Fund. The climate change is not an environmental problem. It's not an environmental issue, but it is an economic uh, issue, development issue. Uh, therefore, if we want to, if we want to deal with, with climate change, we also uh, need to take care of poverty, of development needs in developing countries, uh, and of, uh, ethical, of the ethical dimension of climate change, that is, on the responsibility that developed countries have uh, with respect to uh, the situation in future impacts of climate change in developing countries. What we need to decide in the future is not how to deal with climate change, but how to deal with economic development taking into account climate change.